Hi there, this is one of a series of videos accompanying the Joomla tutorial developing an MVC component. And this time we're looking at adding a front end form. Now I'm going to split the uh, what I'm saying about this step into two, and I'm going to cover in the first video the kind of standard Joomla front end forms and the general approach. And then in the second video, I'll cover all these other little bits and pieces. Now, although this uh, step is really quite long in terms of form and input, in terms of uh, amount of code, new code, um, actually it doesn't contain all that much that hasn't been covered in previous steps. So it's really quite a bit is um, just revision and covering off these things like adding backend actions. Um, adding verifications, configuration, ACL, and those sorts of things. And it's really doing those sorts of things on the front end um, rather than the back end as we did before in the admin side of things. Now, when you start thinking about, um, on a, if you've got a blank sheet of paper, you think, well, how do I go about adding a front end form? Well, one of the main places to start is to look and see what Joomla provides by itself. And Joomla actually provides a couple of front-end forms um, that you can actually follow. So for example, if you do menus, main menu, add new menu item, and you come up with the, the choice of menu item you want to select, and you select articles, and if you, click on this one, create article, that will create um, a front end form. And I did that before and I put it under this article form menu item. So when I click on that, it will come up with the standard Joomla form for creating an article in the front end. And you can see that. Um, another thing that you can do is if you go down to contacts and add a single contact, and we'll actually go through and just add this um, so that you can see it. So we'll add contact. We need to select a user or a contact. Let's click on one I entered earlier. And we've just got to make sure that it's that contact has got an email address set up. And it has got an email address. So if we close that and then save and close that. And then we come along to our front end. And whenever this finishes, I'll refresh this. And you can see that contact menu item. And if I click on that, it should show me the contact details for Fred, but it will also have that contact form, um, which will allow someone to enter their details and, and send a message basically, um, like a registration type of form. So that's another form that there is available on the system. And of course you can look at the code for those. So if we go to our code and we go through, it's not the administrator, it's the components section because we're looking at the site. And if we look at com contact, that one that we just looked at, and look at contact, that's where we'll see the layout for that form. And if we go into forms there, and look at contact.xml. I'll just open that to have a look at it. You can see contact name, contact email, contact subject, contact message. Basically the same here, name, email, subject, message that you get there. And similarly, you can go to look at the com content one and com content. And if you go down to the views forms, form view, um, you got the view.html.php, the layout file, and the associated um, model. If you click on the models, you've got form.php, which is the associated model. Now, with the standard Joomla 
um, functionality, you really just get the ability to add a new article. You don't um, have the ability to manage articles. But if you go looking for extensions, um, and in particular looking for UAM, if you do a search for that, you can find this, this extension here. And I actually put that onto another kind of test Joomla site that I have here. And this is it here. And this allows you to see all of your articles and to edit them. And all of this is on the front end. See, there's no administrator there. And you can select an article and go in to edit it, um, change publishing and all that sort of stuff. All via the front end. Okay, so um, that's really all I wanted to say, just to prove that via the front end, you can really do the same sort of things as you can in the back end. And in fact, Joomla provides the, the equivalent mechanisms um, to do things in the front end compared to the back end. So let's start going through the code and uh, we'll start by just a bit of a refresher regarding how we did things on the back end. So if you remember in the, I think it was the adding back end actions, we have got our Hello World's view, which displays all of the views. Um, I've just added in this step so you can see the author and creator create time, date time um, there already. But when we clicked on new or edited something, we got into a form which allowed us to create a new um, a new hello world message. I see there's a, 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 a text field missing there. And um, that's the same sort of thing that we want to do here. We want to provide a form that will allow the user on the front end to enter the details and then press save or cancel. So what we did at the back end, we, if you remember, whenever someone clicked, clicked new or edit, we came into our controller and it was the kind of like standard controller. All we had to do then was call display and we call display, we got the form, the edit form, form that's associated with this. Um, and then we displayed that. Then we got the item to display if we're doing an edit and just put it on the form. And then we displayed those save and cancel buttons. And we had the equivalent layout file for actually displaying the HTML. And then when we looked at the actual code in the tutorial, we find that it was using jmodel admin. And we find that get item was already um, built into um, jmodel admin. So we could use that provided we gave the um, code, the information about where to get the item from the get table. Then the second thing that we had to look at was whenever we press these save and cancel buttons, those were going to result in uh, post HTTP post messages to our um, server. And we had to handle those post um, requests. And they came in as post requests and the task variable was set to hello world.save or hello world.cancel. And then whenever we selected the uh, controller, which was in the kind of controller subdirectory, we had to write the save and cancel methods. And the cancel was fairly straightforward. We just set a redirect back to the kind of list view for the uh, hello world messages. But with save, we had to get the post data. Um, we had to save that data in the database via call to the model and then put a message back out to the screen to say it been saved directly, um, successfully and set a redirect back to the, um, 
back to this view here. And then when we looked at the tutorial code and find that it had um, extended J control reform and J model and admin, and we find lo and behold that we didn't really have to do all that work because the save cancel um, methods in J control reform and the save method in J model admin um, did all that heavy lifting for us. So here's a summary of what we did in the admin side of things, the first two rows there. And then this will then give us a view of what we should do on our site side of things. So for a start, we wanted to have a form. So we needed to define the form and we put it into this XML file here, hello world.xml. And the functionality involved displaying the form and those save and cancel buttons. So we're going to have to do the same in our site. We're going to have to have a form defined in XML and it's just been put into a different file, add form.xml there. So that's pretty much the same. Um, we This top gray line here is all about displaying the form and the yellow bit is about handling the post. So if we go to displaying the form, we are just our main controller and we really didn't have to do anything to that. And we find if we look in our uh, code in the tutorial down here, we don't have to do anything to the um, controller. It doesn't need to be changed at all. Um, we then had our view and our layout and our model, and we called those a hello world view.html.php and, and put a layout file edit.php under that, and we had an equivalent model. So we've got to do the same sort of thing on our site. However, we already have used hello world um, view and model on our site, and we've used that to display the message. So whenever we display the message, and that's just the category associated, when we display that message, then um, it's using the hello world view. So we do the same sort of thing, but we just put it in a different subdirectory and it's been put in the form subdirectory here. And then it's the equivalent form.php model. And we like here, um, extend J model admin. So if we look at the code for that, up here is our ad form. We've got our greeting, the hello world greeting that's going to be saved, whatever category is going to be associated. Here is just a message that is just going to be put into the email. Um, but it's not going to be put into the database. A capture, and we'll, I'll talk a wee bit about that later on, and the category, and most of those things are going to end up in the database. Um, the controller, as I said, don't, doesn't need to be changed. The view then is going to be fairly straightforward, and it's going to be fairly similar to our admin side of things. And this is the, the main stuff here to get the form, um, add in the JavaScript file, check can the user, um, is the user allowed to add stuff? Has he got create access on the hello world functionality? And obviously if you're putting in something like a registration form, you might well leave that out because you want anyone to be able to, to enter the data in. And that's about it, then just calling display. Our layout file is going to be fairly similar to our admin as well. We're just going to display the fields. Um, instead of using the kind of standard Joomla admin, uh, admin buttons, we're going to use buttons that are styled using these um, styles here. 
button, button primary. And as you may well be aware, these are kind of standard uh, styles that are associated with the Bootstrap framework, uh, which was, I believe, developed for Twitter. Um, and then on click, this is the key thing on whenever they click the save, they're going to result in a hello world save task being sent. And whenever they hit cancel, it's going to result in hello world cancel. And then onto the model, the model is going to be just the same as on the admin side. And the only real difference is going to call add form because that's the name of the form that we're going to display instead of what it was, probably hello world. So that's that, all very similar to the admin side of things. Then if we look at handling the post requests, we've got cancel and save to look at. Um, it was coming through into this subsidiary controller in controllers.hello world. So we're going to have the same sort of thing on our site. We have to look at handling, cancel and save, and we'll just use the same approach, hello world.php in our controller subdirectory. And as before, we're going to use jcontroller form. And we find that using jcontroller form, it did have save and cancel. And we'll have a look to see, well, can we reuse those methods or do we have to change them? Um, with the view and the layout, well, those aren't really applicable because we're just going to do a redirect back to something or other. And on the um, admin side of things, we redirect it back to this um, display here. And on the form, on the hello world, site um, what we're going to do is we're just going to redirect back to the same form so nothing sophisticated there so the view and the layout aren't going to be applicable because we're not going to be displaying them and then in the admin we had to um, handle the save and we use the j model admin there in hello world.php um, which was the same as the view so we had a hello world.php model in the view there, um, same as the view name. So what we're going to do is use the same view here as well. We're going to use the form view, the one that we used um, for the display. And we're going to extend jmodeladmin and we're actually going to find that the save functionality there is going to be just what we need. So we're, we're going to be able to use that okay. So if we go back to our code, handling the HTTP post. So this is our controller. We've got it in the controller subdirectory and we're extending jcontroller form and we need our cancel and save. So the question is, can we use the cancel and save, which is in jcontroller form? Um, or do we have to write our own? And the only way to see that really is to look at the functionality in jcontroller form and assess, does it meet our needs um, or do we have to do our own thing? So if we go to our um, library, we will find in legacy controllers form, so we'll open that, whoops. So this is jcontroller form, and we want to look for, let's look for cancel first of all. And what I'll do is I'll bring in the controller that was um, developed on our tutorial step, and then we'll put them side by side. So this is us cancel and I'll just move this over a bit that time. So here on the left hand side we've got our um, 
we've got our J controller form and on the right hand side we've got the our own controller from this um, from this tutorial so if you look at cancel in the standard Joomla form we've got what are we doing we're doing a check token um, we're doing uh, something to do with checking in the current record which isn't going to be appropriate we want to do the check token obviously but this isn't going to be appropriate so it's a bit superfluous clean the session data so that means that um, if someone has entered data into the form and they press cancel whenever they go into the form again we don't want to, them to see the data they previously entered so we'll clear the data so we'll want to do that and then we want to set a redirect however this redirect here is going back to the the list view as it were so it's going back to hello worlds in our case and that's what we don't want to do so for this case we can use pretty much all of it we just don't want to use this redirect here so what we can do in our own code here we can go along and say we'll, we'll, we'll run the parent cancel um, but after that it will have set up the wrong redirect so what we'll do is we will just use our own redirect and um, juri get instance i'll talk a wee bit about it again but it gives us the current uh, url and if we do get the string version of that it'll just give us back the, the same url to go back to the same form so that's the cancel we can reuse the parent but we just need to change something. However, if we look at the save, we'll find that really it's significantly different from what we want to do. So we will have to change the save and really this is just um, our own save here on the right hand side. However, going through the functionality within Joomla gives us a good idea of what needs to be done. So we can actually use that as the basis of what we need to write and really just change things as necessary. So if we go through this, we've got check token and we want to do that. So we've copied that over. Um, it's just setting up some variables. Um, it's saved to copy or well, we don't have to worry about that so we can skip that access check so we want to check can this person who sent in this post request actually perform this action and here it's calling a function allow save which can be overridden and i think we've overridden it in the past in our admin side of things but we can just do the check here and check that the user has got call create access and if not, then we can send a, um, an unauthorized message back. Validate the posted data. So to validate the posted data, we need to do the same sort of thing. Um, here we're getting the data from the HTTP post. Remember, it comes in in J form um, array. We want to uh, set up the context for saving it so that if there is a problem with it, we don't want the user to have to enter all of the data in again. We just want them to see what is entered in before and then fix it. So that's why we're saving it there. Um, to validate the posted data, we need to get an instance of the form. And then when, once we've got that, this is the key thing here, is we use this validate function. And this validate function is going to run the validate equals functions that we have on our form fields. So if you remember going back to our standard form fields, um, if we went to, uh, well, I know there's one on a capture, for example. If we went on a capture, we've got this validate field here. 
and whenever we put in our own form we put in validate equals for the greeting here and it's at this stage here that it runs those validate functions and checks is the data actually valid and it also does um, something else which is if we go back to again to our standard form fields this is a text area form field type and it's got a filter there so this is um, uh, kind of like a routine that is run to filter the data which has been input into forms and it's got an example here filter equals raw and in those cases uh, where there's a filter it will run the data through that filter now you may remember in the past looking at this feel this page here retrieving request data using jinput and whenever we passed um, kind of like a, a request to the input to get some variable we passed a filter so you've got various filters int integer and all that sort of stuff however what we're talking about here isn't the same as that it's different filters and if you go on to this um, this uh, stack overflow question here what are the filters in Joomla form fields you'll see the various filters that they are and you can actually go to the code and see these filters so although it says for a full list of J input filters and how to use them it points to that website it shouldn't really because that is a different sort of filter mechanism these filters um, can be applied to um, whenever you're say for example retrieving a parameter which is part of the URL and um, they will be applied to data which isn't part of a form whereas these ones here are really talking about data that's part of a form and the filters that are applied based on these filters here so if we go through to um, here and this file here and you'll find it in the libraries joomla form form.php and if you look down here at this filter field method you will see these various sorts of filters if i do find for case you'll see them Okay, so those various types of filters. So those are the ones that are actually applied whenever you pass um, pass the data through this validate routine. And in particular, what it does by default is it strips out HTML. So if you develop this and you put in some HTML tags into say the message field, you'll find that those will be um, extracted through this taken out. Okay, so that's the validation side of things. Um, if the validation fails, we want to make sure that we save that form data. Um, what the data has been, uh, the data the user has already entered, and then set back to the redirect. So let's go back to here. Um, at this stage now, we've got the data validated. And the next thing is to try and save it. So we wanted to add a couple of extra fields in. We want to add the created by field. And if we run jfactory get user, we'll get the ID, get the, the user, the j user instance there. And then from that, we can do the get ID to get the ID of the user. And that's what we're going to save in the database and um, this is just a php function to get the date so we're going to add into that valid data um, array that came back from validate we're going to add in those couple of extra fields and then we're going to try and save it 
Again, we have to handle the case where there's problems, set redirect. And after that, then we're in the position where it has been saved successfully. So we want to clear out the user data from the form so that if he goes back into it again, he doesn't see that data again. Um, here we're doing check-in, which doesn't really apply. And all of this stuff here is a bit more complex than we need. Um, we just need to set the user state back. Um, they're actually doing various things based on the task there. And then that is really about it uh, from the standard functionality. But what we want to add then in is we want to be able to send an email to somebody. And in our in our code, in our config code, which I'll have to try and find. Here, we've put in a field which allows the administrator to define the user who's going to receive an email um, about this new hello world message being entered. So if, for example, you had a registration form, this is the sort of functionality that you would want to use. And then whenever we go to system global configuration, and we go into our hello world area of that, we can actually put in the um, user. Here it is here. So you can select the user. Okay. And I'll talk a little bit about um, setting up mail um, in the next video, but it's that's all fairly straightforward. And then the final thing that we just have to do is to set the redirect back to the form. So that's really covered the main bit of the uh, displaying the form and handling the post parameters. Um, so I'll stop this video now and then I'll cover the other bits and pieces in the second video. Thanks for watching.